Hello, I'm Charlie Warfield. Welcome to the Modern Fly Fisher YouTube channel. Today, we are gonna begin a series. We're gonna begin a journey of fly tying videos that will take you from never tied a fly before to being a beginner fly tire and having tied some flies. Today, we're gonna to tie a fly called the Wooly Bugger. It's a great fly to fish. It's a great fly to tie. It's a great fly to start with. It's the first fly that I ever tied. Um, and so we're going to teach you how to do that. We're going to go over the materials needed and the tools needed to begin fly tying. So let's start. The basic tools for fly tying are a vise. And vices don't have to be fancy. You can get a vise starting at about $12 or $14. I'll put some links down below in the description to some great beginner fly tying vices. The next tool that you're going to need is a bobkin holder. This is a bobkin holder. This part right here that has the thread on it is called a bobkin. And then you put this on it and this is a bobkin holder and you just use this to control the thread as you're tying. You thread, put the thread through this tip here and control the thread. Um, many times people refer to this as a bobkin and that's perfectly fine. The next tool that we're gonna need is some scissors or trimmers. These are sort of different special ones. Uh, this is the type that I normally suggest people start out with and I use these a lot as well. I'm gonna put a link to these scissors right down in the description. The next tool that you're gonna need to tie flies is a whip finish. We're gonna use this whip finish today to tie off our flies. And this is a, an important tool. You can do this by hand. There are many different tools that, that do this job, but today we're gonna use a whip finish and learn how to do that, and then you can expand from there in the future. Another handy tool that we're not necessarily gonna to use today, but that is worth having is a bodkin. A bodkin is just a sharp tool that you use for either applying glue or moving material around on your fly. So I would suggest you get one of those as well. Now let's go over the materials that we're going to need for the woolly bugger. The first material that we are going to use today is called marabou and it's this very fluffy soft feather. It has a great look in the water. We use it for the tail on the woolly bugger. The next material that we're going to use today for the body of this woolly bugger is something called peacock curl. And I suggest that we use peacock curl as a beginner fly tire because it's a super versatile material that you'll use on literally thousands of fly designs. So instead of using a chenille or some other type of body on this thread, when I'm telling people what to get to begin fly tying, I just use a peacock curl. And the third component of this fly is some hackle. The hackle is what wraps over the body and creates this, this nice body that moves in the water, kind of looks like legs or gives a little bit of shape to the body. And we're using um, most of the time a hen hackle for that. There's a link to that down in the description as well. And then finally, you're gonna use whatever kind of thread you want to tie the fly with. Today I'm going to use this bright color because it's going to be helpful for you guys to see what we're doing. After we have the hook in our vise, we're just going to begin by wrapping a thin layer of thread down the shank of this hook. And we want this to be consistent. We want to completely cover the shank of the hook. This will make for a very sturdy fly. fly that doesn't twist on us later. And we'll go to about there. Next we'll take our marabou 
and grab a feather off of the marabou. I'm going to grab one of these up here from the middle. And you'll notice some of these are kind of bunched together and I don't really want those, so I'm going to strip those off. We want these nice fluffy fibers here. Now you can just take this whole tail and tie it right on. That's a perfectly fine way to do it. A lot of people tie their woolly buggers that way. And for the purposes of this video, we're going to do that. We want. we want to use as much marabou. The marabou should be the length of the hook shank. We'll put a wrap over and another wrap and just make sure that that's sitting on there nicely. We can spread it over the hook shank a little bit and then finish it off with two more wraps. At this point, we can just trim off the stem of the feather and you'll notice that I leave some other fibers here. And the reason that I'm doing that is I just want to create a little bit of a body for this fly. So as I wrap this thread up here, I'm wrapping this marabou material around the hook and just giving it a little bit larger profile. Part of the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to be using peacock curl for the body, the main part of the body of this fly. And peacock curl is not very thick, so it doesn't have a lot of bulk to it. I just want to build up that bulk a little bit and use the marabou to do that. So now we'll wrap this back. We don't need to cover this completely with thread. We're just holding that material down. Come back to our starting point with our thread. Next we want to select a piece of hackle. <clears throat> Hen hackle is the most common and that's what I would suggest you start out with. And we take it by the tip here and I have just pulled back those fibers. It's hard to see. I've just pulled back those fibers and created a little spot to tie that in, like such. Okay, then wrap it back again. Now we're going to take our peacock curl. And I'm going to select four strands, about four strands. <clears throat> and I'm just going to pull the tips right off because these tips are really kind of weak. So I'm getting rid of about that first three quarters of an inch. And now I'll just lay this right on top of the hook the same way that I did uh, the feather, the, the hackle feather. And I'm just going to wrap this down. And I'm going to leave my thread hanging right there in the front. Now I'm going to take the peacock curl and wrap it around the hook shank. Moving forward and creating the body of our fly. And I have a pretty big hook that I'm working with here. So I kind of just have enough material in those peacock curl. Okay. Now, I'm going to repeat that process with this hackle here and I have just sort of gone against the grain of this feather and spread out that hackle a bit. I like the way that that helps the hackle spread out as I wrap it around. We're just going to wrap forward. Making sure that we don't go over the top of any of our feathers here. feather barbs or 
fibers that are sticking out. <clears throat> Wrap this forward. the way up to the eye of the hook here. Then we'll, I'm just holding that feather in place and wrapping thread over it. I'm going to wrap it over the other way here, locking it down very nicely. Then we can trim it off. Now we're just going to build up a little bit of a head, not enough, not a giant bulge or anything, but just enough to cover up our material there at the end. Then we'll take our whip finish tool, and I believe this is a Dan style. So you, you take your thread. Hold it there, point the handle towards the hook, set the whip finish tool on the thread, pull the thread back over, turning that, and what you're doing is you're creating a cross right there with your thread. So, let's see here, a cross with the thread. Now we pull that down to the eye of the fly, and we just wrap four to five times and then use that hook to pull the tension out and we'll repeat that <clears throat> one more time. Well there you have it, the woolly bugger. It's a great fly to fish, it's a great fly to tie. If you just tied one for the very first time, congratulations. Welcome to the world of fly tying. Check out our next video in the series, which is going to appear right here in your screen in just a moment. And over here on this side, we're going to see my fish. I'm holding a fish. If you click on that round button, you will subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate you doing that. Follow along with us as we learn about fly tying and fly fishing and adventure and all kinds of great stuff. Down in this description, we have links to all kinds of materials that we use today and products that will be helpful to you. So make sure and check those out. I really appreciate it. Until next time, fish more, catch more.